A profile toolpath is basically machining along a line or curve. They can be set to machine outside, along or inside the selected line. In this example, I have three rectangles which are all different colours. The first one that I'm going to machine is the inside one. The first thing to do is open up all of the toolpath options. This is done by selecting toolpaths under the project tree on the right hand side of the screen. This will then show all of the toolpath options directly underneath the splitter bar. The section that we are going to be concentrating on at first is the 2D toolpaths area and the first icon on the list is the profile toolpath. To use the profile toolpath, the vector will need to be selected when the toolpath is calculated. At the top of the profile dialog, there is a drop down which allows you to select along, inside or outside. This sets whether the tool cuts along the profile or on the inside or outside of it. For this first rectangle, I'm going to select inside. Next to this option on the right, it will say by default selected vectors. If you wish to machine to a vector layer, you would select this drop down and then select the vector layer rather than selecting the vectors. You can add a final pass thickness, which will leave the amount you specify on the bottom for the final cut. A final pass allowance allows you to add or remove extra material. The next thing to do is specify the finished depth. This is how deep you want to machine. It is always a positive figure. So you may think that you might need to enter a minus figure because it's going down. It's always a positive figure, not a negative figure. In this example, I'm entering 12 millimeters as the finished depth. Under the profiling tool, click the area that says click to select, and this will open up the tool database, which is a catalog of tools that are available. I'm going to expand the metric tools, wood or plastic, and then roughing and 2D finishing. Finally, I'm going to select a 12 mm end mill to cut the part. I'm then going to select to define the material that I'm going to be using at the bottom of the dialog. This will open up the material setup dialog where you can enter the thickness of the material that you are using and also set up the zero in the Z axis, whether this is at the top of the material or at the bottom. Finally, select Calculate Now, and ArtCam will generate a toolpath on the inside of this rectangle to a depth of 12 millimeters. I personally like to rotate the view around so I can see the depth of the toolpath, which is colored in red. You'll also notice that there is a gray line. This is a 2D preview of the toolpath. The toolpath previews can be toggled on or off by selecting the light bulbs next to the toolpaths in the project tree. The left light bulb toggles the gray 2D preview and the right light bulb toggles the 3D preview. You may also notice blue and light blue lines. These are rapid and plunge moves that the CNC machine will make when cutting the part. To see the profile toolpath, expand the toolpath section in the project tree. From here, select the profile to give options under the splitter bar or right click to get the same options. I'm going to select simulate toolpath to give a quick simulation of how this toolpath is going to look prior to machining it for real. This gives a gray simulation and will toggle the vectors off. To turn them back on, select toggle vector visibility. I can also rename the toolpath by right clicking on it and selecting rename. I'm now going to create another profile toolpath. This time it is going to be along. The first thing to point out is that the finished depth is automatically set to 12 millimeters. ArtCam is assuming that I want to cut through the material that I have set up, 
which I don't want to do for this particular toolpath. So I'm going to enter a depth of one millimeter as I want this to be a groove rather than a cutout. For this, I'm going to use a three millimeter ball nose tool, which has a radius, which will give a nice roundy groove. I can then calculate it and the toolpath will be generated along the rectangle. You'll also notice that another profile has been created in the project tree, which I can right click and simulate to show the groove. For the outside, I can create another profile toolpath. Obviously this one set to outside and automatically this is going to go to a depth of 12 millimeters. I'm selecting a 12 millimeter end mill to machine this and finally calculate the toolpath. Again, right click and rename to outside, then simulate the toolpath. There are even more options in the profile options. For instance, you can add a move on the CNC which goes into the cut and out of the cut at a specified angle and distance. These are known as lead in and out moves and reduce issues when plunging on the start point of the toolpath. This can also be set to be a circular arc so the tool gradually cuts into the profile. Ramping moves can also be added these moves affect how the tool plunges into the material in Z. This is by default set as a zigzag motion, but can also be set to spiral down or make a smooth transition down to the depth of cut. Bridges or tabs as they are also known, keep the part that is being cut secured to the material. Obviously this is useful if the part being cut does not have any support and prevents it from moving, causing damage not only to the part, but also to the tool. These can be filed or sanded off afterwards. Finally, as I mentioned earlier, you can also select layers to machine rather than selecting vectors. This is great if you have lots of vectors and saves time having to select them all, providing they are on different layers.